Hi everyone and welcome back to another common tennis video. Today I've got the all new 2020 Yonex E-Zone 98 to review for you guys. I've been seeing this racket all over the internet and all the people reviewing it have been giving it a ton of praise and it's been getting really positive reviews. I was really excited to try this racket out and although it's been getting a lot of positive reviews on the internet, I wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I was going to be and I'll explain to you guys the reasons why in this video. But before I get into my personal thoughts and experience with this racket, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the specs. I'm also going to put it on the screen for you guys so you can see them as I go through it. So the Ezone 98, it weighs in at 305 grams unstrung and it has a swing weight of 315. It's got a 16 by 19 string pattern and the strung balance of the racket is 16 points headlight with the weight slightly favoring the handle. It's got a stiffness rating of 65, and the racket that I'm testing is strung with the head hawk touch string, but this is the black edition string, and it's strung at 55 pounds. I'm gonna take you guys on court with me and give you my honest thoughts and opinions about the new 2020 E-Zone 98. All right guys, so we're just enjoying this first hit after being in quarantine and pulling out this racket. The first thing that stuck out to me about the racket is how good the paint color actually looks. And especially when you're outside and in the sun, it's got like this metallic flake in it that shimmers when you're out in the sun. So it looks really cool, especially outdoors. Another thing that's unique about the design of the racket that I really enjoyed is it has tapered edges towards the handle of the racket. It reminds me a lot of the Babla Pure Arrow and it makes it a little bit better when it comes to swinging and moving through the air. And of course, being a Yonex racket, it's got that isometric head shape that gives it a little bit larger of a sweet spot. With the tapered edges I was telling you guys about earlier, the racket's got some pretty decent maneuverability. It wasn't as good as I expected, especially coming from my personal Yonex racket, which is the V495, which is a highly maneuverable racket. This one felt a little bit slow for me, but overall it did a decent job when it came to maneuverability. The biggest thing that I was looking forward to with hitting with this racket was actually to see the power. Now, one thing that all the other reviewers that I've been watching have been saying about this racket is how easy it is to get power from it. But what I found was it was actually a little bit disappointing in terms of the power. Sure, it's got decent power, but based on the things I was hearing, I think I already had a preconceived idea about this being a powerful racket and it just wasn't the case. This racket isn't a power beast like I was expecting. It's more an all around racket as opposed to one that's gonna be blasting people off the court. You're gonna need to use a little bit of that control, variety, and power when you're using this racket to get those wins. When I was playing and thinking about the power, it also got me thinking about who this racket would be right for. I think that what Yonex is going for with this one is they're targeting like the all around player. So they're looking with somebody who's got the variety in their shots. They hit from all different spots on the court and they need something that's gonna be consistent and reliable. So this is a great racket for people who are often transitioning between defense and offense and are hitting the tennis ball from different points in the court. I found that this racket was very consistent and predictable, which is what a player like that is gonna be looking for. And overall, it does a decent job at all things. It's kind of like a Swiss army knife or a jack of all trades. It doesn't have any extreme strength in any one category. I'm gonna be giving this racket the very first mic score. So basically what that is, I'm gonna give each racket a score out of 10 in the following categories. Styling, power, control, maneuverability, feel, and cool factor. So for the styling of the racket, this racket has got some of the best paint and cosmetics out of any of the rackets I've seen. And those tapered edges really make it look unique within the Yonex lineup. They are sticking kind of with a similar theme in terms of their paint, especially when you're lining them up side by side. When you have the E-Zone, the V-Core and the V-Core Pro all lined up next to each other with all the similar kind of paint designs, it does look really cool in the lineup. So for the styling of the racket, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Next is power. So for the power of the racket, it is good, but it's not devastating. And you're definitely not gonna be blasting people off the court just with the power of this racket alone, but it is decent. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. This racket has good control, but it's not as precise as some of the 18 by 20 string pattern rackets. So this racket gets a seven out of 10. Now for the feel of the racket, these Yonex rackets always have a high quality feel and like I said, with that paint, just the, the feel in the hand, this feels like a high quality product. And also it inspires confidence when you take it out on court. It feels like it can do damage when you take it out there. And it is comfortable and fun to hit with. So for feel, I give this racket an eight out of 10. So next maneuverability, like I said, this racket is decent. It's not gonna feel light as a feather in your hand, but it does the job and it gets a seven out of 10. So finally, I'm gonna give this racket a score in the cool factor. And basically the cool factor is gonna be, what's the significance of this racket when it lines up to all other rackets. So one thing with this one that makes it a little bit unique is that it's endorsed by Nick Kyrgios. He's got a lot of flair on the court, so it makes it pretty cool that you're playing with the same racket that you see him playing with. Although a downside is that it's not the actual racket that he plays with. Another thing about this racket when I'm considering cool factor 
is how does it line up with the previous generations of this racket? Is it a huge step forward? And I think that this one is pretty similar to the E-Zones that have come before. So for the cool factor, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. So when we take that all together, the 2020 Yonex E-Zone 98 gets an overall mic score of 45 out of 60. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the 2020 Yonex E-Zone 98. It feels good to have some new racks to try out and to actually be able to go out onto the court and play. Although I'm still trying to shake off some of the rust from sitting around for two months, it still was a lot of fun going out and playing with the new racket. I hope you guys also enjoyed the introduction of the mic score, something I'm gonna be keeping on this channel with all my reviews. And I'm actually gonna keep them all in a chart and stack them up. So you're gonna see how it compares to the rackets that I've reviewed previously on the channel. If you guys liked today's video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps boost this channel. And also if you don't wanna miss any of the future reviews coming out, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.